Matthew 15. God bless you for making it here today. If you're joining us over the social media feed, God bless you. We are going to be taking a look at the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28. And when you have it, praise God. When you have it, oh Jesus, praise God. It reads as follows. <clears throat> then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Hmm. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. And he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for how you continue to shower us with your grace your mercy, just your overall presence and influence in our lives, God. We ask you right now, if there's anything unlike you in our lives, expose it, reveal it, and remove it. Forgive us for any sin of omission, commission, poor disposition, anything that we may have said or done that fell short of your glory, that fell to exemplify the character of Christ that you are developing in us all, Father God. Make us conscious of those areas of maturity that we lack, Father God. Make us conscious of those areas where we need to grow. Make us make us conscious of those areas where we need to improve and let us diligently and faithfully work and exercise those in those areas, God. We ask you right now to open our eyes that we behold the wondrous things within your law. Open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And open our hearts so that the seed of the word that is sown today finds good ground, takes root, grows and produces fruit at the appropriate time that you may be glorified. Now, God, I ask you yet again to hide me behind the cross and speak through these lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. These things I pray in the matchless name of our Lord, Savior, Redeemer, and friend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you're taking notes, and I know someone is taking notes, and you just have to know where we're going with this message today, or if you need the title, I want you to keep this thought in mind as we talk about this passage of scripture found in the book of Matthew. Just think about this. No more crumbs. No Jesus. more crumbs. For those who have pressed out today and decided that there was no other place that they would rather be than in the house of the Lord and hearing the word of God and they believe that there was a message that was telling me for them today, today I want you to understand that God is saying, today you do not have to settle for crumbs any longer. Yes. No more crumbs. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Spirit. In the text, we see a woman, and the woman is in need. She is coming because her daughter is vexed, vexed demon-possessed, she says. And she brings her issue to Jesus, similar to how a lot of times we bring our troubles and our cares and our worries, our sickness, our struggles, whatever they may be, our frustrations, our disappointment, our depression, we bring them to God. Mm -hmm. Similar, this woman brought it to Christ and we are instructed to bring our burdens to God. However, in this particular instance, 
we see Christ and Christ responds in a way that is not typical of how he usually responds mm -hmm. with requests such as these. Right, right. When he, when people were sick and lame, he would say, your sins are forgiven. Or he was like, take up your bed and walk. Or he would say, you don't have to wait for the angel of trouble, no water, no more. Get up and go. Your, your, your faith has made you whole. But, but this time, with this woman, the interaction and the exchange was a little bit different when she didn't get the normal cookie cutter response that she was expecting. Have you ever experienced a struggle? Have you ever had a problem in your life and you took it to someone and you thought that they could help you with your situation and the response what wasn't what you thought it should be? They kind of threw you a curveball that you weren't expecting. Perhaps you went to the church and you had an issue and you had an ideal or an assumption that this is the church and the church is supposed to do this, that, and the other. And then when you got there, the pastor or the leader or the Christian, because the church isn't just a building, but the church is the called out body of born again believers. So you may have taken your issue or your concern to someone of faith that you thought was supposed to be a Christian and they did not respond the way that you thought a Christian or a member of the body of Christ was supposed to respond. Has that ever happened to you? Yes. Church folk didn't act like <laughs> church folk. We're trying to get somewhere though. Remember, we're trying to get to a place where we don't have to settle for crumbs anymore. Y'all, 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 y'all hold on for a minute. Y'all hold on for a minute. Amen. And and, and, and when when you got to that place where that response that you weren't expecting was delivered, how did you respond? How did you respond? Did you get an attitude? Were you disappointed? Were you offended? Did you simply just say, oh, well, whatever, you can't help me. Did you just, like, accept defeat? Yeah. Those, those, those were typical responses, you know, to be expected that were to be understood because those, were, those are the same responses you would give whether it was a person in the world or a person in the church. That's the human nature. That's the humanity that exists in us all. Don't get on your nerves when you bring somebody your issue, especially in the church. You pour out your heart and the clergy says, we'll be praying for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You kind of you you take that because you know you kind of got to take it, but you be like, you need a little more than some prayer, deacon, <laughs> minister. We praying for you. How do you really feel when that happens? How do you really, how do you really feel? What do you really think? What really goes through your mind? Jesus responds to this woman when she brings her issue to him. Jesus responded in a way that many may have considered offensive or insulting. In verse 26, Jesus goes as far as to equate the woman's status, her social economical status, to that of a dog. We ain't going to go there yet. We ain't gonna go there yet. But 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 just that alone would be insulting to most of us. Right. When you're insulted, just think about this. You don't have to answer this, but just think about it. When you feel as though you've been insulted or disrespected for whatever reason, because you because of the color of your skin, because of the place that you grew up, because of the associates that you have, how do you respond to that disrespect? Don't answer that. How do you respond to the offense? Do you get up? Do you give up? Do you cuss them out? Do you lash out at the offender? Do you begin to see that person, and in this particular case, the church, right. differently right. in a more negative way? I'm helping somebody yeah. because a lot of people don't get what they want to get when they want to get it from the church. And then they ain't got nothing but negative things to say about the church. I mean, I'm not trying to be in nobody's business, but somebody might just be in a bad place. And when the church can't instantly meet that need, they be like, oh, y'all supposed to be Christians. Yes. <laughs> Nevertheless, we just didn't have enough to pay your three months mortgage. That is, you know, now that you, we didn't. It's not our fault that you didn't pay your bills three months ago. Why are you just showing up now? Okay? <laughs> Had you come when you were sick, maybe we could have helped you with a budget, help you get your finances in order before you got to this point. But a lot of times when the when the when the church can't magically hocus pocus, abracadabra, all of your problems away, people start negatively talking and think, oh, Pastor got a new car. Wonder what they're doing with the building fund money. Y'all heard all that stuff. 
The woman respect the, the, Jesus responded negatively to the woman. The woman's response was not typical to what the flesh and humanity would typically make you do. The woman in the text does not allow the insult to offend her because she realizes that what she is seeking after is more important than her feelings. She understands, hallelujah, that the one who made the offensive comment is the only one who can deliver her from her present dilemma. Y'all heard that? Not only does she realize that her feelings don't, she can't afford to get caught up in her feelings right now because somebody else is depending on her to come through, to be mature, to look beyond the moment and get the mission accomplished. And then she realizes that the one she came seeking, the one that is the advocate, the one who has the power and the authority to make everything wrong right is the one who made, the, who is behaving in the, 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 the way that would be considered offensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The lady does not allow this to become an occasion for offense. Three times, three times in the text, we see a response from Jesus that was not an encouraging or inspiring response. Mm -hmm. Verse 23 tells us that Jesus basically ignores her. He basically ignores her. Verse 24, Jesus clarifies his purpose, stating he's not sent but for a select group of society. And she ain't a part of that society. Mm. Verse 25, Jesus pushes the limits of this woman's hope, saying, it is not meat to take the children's meat and cast it to the dogs. Wow, wow, wow. Jesus, really? Really, <laughs> Jesus? Really? You know, we got a saying in the world, you know, trick me once, shame on you. Trick me twice, shame on me. Right. But this was three strikes and you're out. You know, really, Jesus? Yeah. Wow. Mm. This woman was ignored. This woman was rejected. And then she was insulted mm -hmm. by Jesus. But none of those things changed her belief about who Jesus was and what she believed he was capable of doing for her. Jesus ignored her. Jesus Jesus said, this ain't for you. This is for my people. Jesus said, no, I'm not giving it to a dog. Mm. Come on. But the lady did not allow that to change her opinion about Jesus. Mm. Woo! Yeah. One bad representative of the church and the whole body of Christ right. is ruined in people's eyes. And guess what? That's why those people will always settle for crumbs. I'm trying to get you to a place where you ain't got to settle for crumbs no more. Y'all with me so yes. far? Because I got to expose this mindset first so we can break down this mindset to get you to have the mindset that you're supposed to have so that you don't have to settle for crumbs anymore. It wasn't about how Christ was treating her. It's about what she believed. And this is a crazy example because Christ is the one doing the quote unquote offending. Yeah. If Christ can say some things that could be taken the wrong way, we should show a little more flexibility between each and uh, each one another. Watch this. She didn't let her feelings and emotions cancel what she knew about Jesus. The woman's tenacity and persistence, her willingness to worship and her humility made her eligible for more than just crumb or table scraps. If you want to, those, those are going to be the things I touched on today, to, today, that tenacity and persistence. That tenacity and persistence. Her willingness to worship her willingness to worship, and her humility. Those are the things that made her eligible for more than just crumbs or table scraps. Today, when you leave this place, you're going to know you don't have to settle for crumbs if you choose to chase after Christ. 
So Jesus initially deals with this woman harshly, but the woman knows that Jesus was more than just that moment. Jesus was deliverance. Jesus was breakthrough. Jesus was everything she needed, not just a feeling. Ooh. Ooh, if we get to the point where we understand church isn't just a feeling, that the Holy Spirit isn't just a tingle up your spine, that it's not just a moment and then we leave the door. This woman understood that Jesus was more than about the moments, but she could not lose the opportunity to get the power and favor of Christ on her, on her side. Let's look at her response. First, when Jesus ignores her, she continues to cry after him. Yes. You ever feel like you're being ignored? Like everybody else is getting their blessing. What about me? <laughs> everybody else getting their raise. Everybody else getting their job. Everybody else getting their healing. We got the same sickness. We on the same medicine. We go to the same doctor. How come I'm still hurting and she leaping for joy? How? What, why? What am I doing wrong? She She's shacking up. How come this situation is better than mine? She out there cussing. How come they getting what seems to be a breakthrough? And God, why are you ignoring me? Look at the woman's response. She doesn't fall into depression. She doesn't give up. She doesn't resort to her old lifestyle because she hasn't gotten her prayer answered yet, so it seems. She continues to cry out. She continues to cry out. The Passion Translation says, the woman screamed out to him saying, Lord, son of David, show mercy on me. My daughter is... Horribly afflicted by a demon that torments her. Jesus ignored her. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus ignored her. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus ignored her. The disciples were like, Jesus. Yeah, like, you know, here is Jesus. Jesus. Okay, 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 Jesus, maybe you can ignore her, but we can't ignore her. We don't got that super Holy Ghost ignoring anointing that you have. So, so could you could you send her away? So the disciples now are like, Jesus, said, listen, listen. Look at the church, folks. Jesus is ignoring her. The woman is causing a scene. The other church folk don't say, Jesus, answer her prayer. They say, Jesus, send her away. Come on. I'm so glad the woman was trying to get Jesus' attention and not the disciples' attention. Right, right. If we learn as believers that to get God's attention and not get so caught up with the pastor or the deacon or the minister that could possibly influence us negatively because they're flawed individuals as well, you'll be in a better place. But the woman wasn't concerned about what the disciples were saying. She wasn't crying out. She wasn't saying Peter. She wasn't saying John. She wasn't saying Matthew. She was saying Jesus, yes. son of David. Mm -hmm. He was the only one yeah. that she was concerned about connecting with. Mm. The disciples said, silence this woman. Don't you hear her screaming? So... The lady did not care that she was being ignored. She was tenacious. She was persistent. She did not stop her pursuit of the favor of God just because she was being ignored. We have to be the same way. When our breakthrough don't break through yet, keep on being tenacious. Keep on seeking after it. Don't turn to another option. Don't look at another solution. Continue to be tenacious. Xavier, come here. Take your, put your coat down. Come here. Come here. You got to be tenacious. Tenacious. Tenacious is the quality of holding fast. Give me your arm. I uh, can't see it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you can't see. Hold on. I got to move this because I want to make sure my example is for the people who may look at this later. See my little man? All right. So, Xavier, I want you to try to get free. Get your arm free. Come on. Get your arm free. Come on. Get your arm free. Come on. Pull your arm away. Pull your arm away. Pull it away. No, 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 no. This is this this work too. This is an example of what not being tenacious looks like. Mm. This is not tenacious. 
this is how some of us stay in bondage because we don't try to break free. We just give up and give in. Thank you, Xavier. Come here, Nazir. Come here, boy. Give me your arm. Try to get fear. Try to get free. Come on, try to get free. Try to break free. Try harder. Try harder. Come on. Don't give up. Keep trying. Keep trying. Keep trying. Keep trying. Keep trying to get pull his arm with his other arm. Keep trying. Keep trying. Don't quit. Don't quit. You hit your hand. You should be hitting my hand. Don't hit me though. Keep trying. Keep trying. Keep trying. See, he's tenacious. He's persistent. He's trying to break free. Now, if he could continue to do this physically, eventually I would get tired of it. And I would do, I would just let him, all right, boy, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, sit down. Go ahead, sit down. That woman was tenacious. She continued to cry out until she got the attention of the person she desired to get connected to. So often we give up. We don't even try to fight and we lose out. I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to tell you. Maybe next week or after Pastor Janelle speaks, maybe the first sermon of the new year, I'm going to tell you who Israel really is. Mm, yeah. Ooh, but you can't be Israel yes. if you're not tenacious. Come on, that's right. If I, if, I, if I just give you a little piece of it so that you can make sure you don't miss this message, the, when, when, when God changed Jacob's name to Israel, it was after he had a tenacious battle with the angel of the Lord. He would not let go. He would not let go. He struggled with the angel all night. And because of his, he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. He was tenacious. Yes. And it was the tenacity that switched his name over from Jacob to Israel. A lot of people think that Israel are the people who live in Israel. But it, the people who God calls Israel, I'm going to break it down when I give you the definition of Israel, are who? those who struggle against the flesh. I'm going to give it to you today. I don't want to give y'all too much. Because now y'all going to miss everything I say in the day. Y'all want to know who Israel is. Uh -huh. Y'all sitting there and give y'all sneak peek. Sneak peek. We have to be tenacious though. She was tenacious. So after she shows that she's tenacious and that she's holding fast to her conviction, God responds to her. One thing I want to throw in here about being tenacious is you have to be, in this battle, we have an example of physical tenacity. But you have to be physically tenacious. It means you have to physically be where God has told you to be. But you also have to be mentally tenacious, meaning you can't allow your mind to wander or be influenced by the smallest thing. You gotta have, you gotta hold fast to what you believe. And you have to be, this is the hard one, you have to be morally tenacious. You have to be morally tenacious. You have to do right when you know to do right. You can't just do wrong when you know to. You have to constantly maintain your character and your morality, even when everyone else is, tell, is doing something else. Even I, I, I'm, t I'm telling you, it's not easy. I've been, I've, Come on. I pay tithes. I've been paying tithes just... I, 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 I've been paying tithes my whole life and giving in church. And then when I found out I was doing it wrong and, and had to do it right a different way, I continued to pay them. I was ignorant in how I was paying them. And I continued to pay them at another level when I got better instruction on properly paying tithes. This isn't about me telling you how to tithe. While I was giving my tithes and serving um, God, I watched my friends get better cars than me. I watched my friends have better clothes than me. I watched them, my, my heathen friends get nice houses and, and promote all that stuff. And I'm like, I'm giving you money. Yeah, I'm, I'm, what's, man, I said, man, if I didn't get this 10% to, to God, I said, I could have all of it. I could, I could be dumping on y'all. I said, I'm all right now. I got rings on my explorer. I can have rings on my escalator, you know. I said, I'm doing okay, but man, I, mm, you know. But, 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 but when God showed me, he's like, are you going to be morally tenacious? Are you going to hold fast and trust me with the increase, and I don't know, man. I'm, and, and this isn't this isn't being being, being, being braggadocious because when you when you learn a lot about me, you you'll learn that God bless. When you learn about us, you learn that God blesses us in a really unique way. But I don't remember. I mean, I don't remember the last time we had a car that wasn't a foreign car. Like, and that's not bragging. That's just because because. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, of course. It's cheap. I, 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 you know, it's, uh, it's not we, 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 because that's favor. We don't pay what the world pays, but we ride like the world rides. But, but, but it's because we hold fast to our beliefs in God that he will supply, that he will provide, that he will bless, and he comes through for us, but we don't compromise in the process of waiting. You cannot compromise. You have to be morally, emotionally, mentally, and physically tenacious if you don't want to settle for crumbs any longer. Amen? You got to have that. In verse 24, finally Jesus addresses the woman. She's screaming behind them. And he says, I was sent only, in verse 24, to the lost sheep of the nation of Israel. Jesus told this woman that he was on a specific assignment for a specific people, and she is not one of them. Mm. I have to teach this boy. Have, but have you, have you ever, I'm going I'm to go where you want to go this way. But have you ever felt out of place in church? Yes. Have you ever felt like, where do I fit in in this whole thing? Maybe even like, maybe it was a season in your life where you felt like, man, I ain't cut out for this church life. This church life ain't for me. It wasn't meant for me. Gotta, 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 gotta get you to hear this right here. The devil is a lie. I had to type that in just so I made sure I said it. So I went out. The devil, <laughs> I was going back. The devil <laughs> is a lie. Listen, when Jesus told this woman he was sent for Israel, the woman didn't concede to what he said, but she became, y'all listen, this is heavy, a little heavy, but she became who he came for because she responded by worshiping him, watch this, like Israel had been failing to do. She responded by worshiping him like Israel had been failing to worship him. Up until this point, Jesus had experienced opposition from the Jews. The people who he came to set free and to deliver. He was sent to set them free from the oppression of the Romans. He was the savior for the Jewish community, but they were rejecting him. The Sadducees and the Pharisees, all of the scribes, all of the church folk, they kept arguing with Jesus and debating with Jesus because he wasn't the type of savior <laughs> that they were looking for. But this woman who he didn't come for worshiped him like the ones who should have been worshiping him weren't. Jesus. This foreign woman was worshiping him. She called him. Listen. Them Pharisees and them Sadducees, they wouldn't dare call him Lord. Right. Oh, do you know what it means that she said, she was, and she was screaming it in public, Lord, mm -hmm. son of David. She was like, I'm recognizing you as the Christ, the Messiah, Lord. Mm -hmm. Wow. A woman he didn't come for recognizes that he is the Messiah, yeah. reverencing him as her sovereign Something the Jews had failed to do. She was willing to worship him. You got to be willing to worship him. You have to be willing to say, oh, you know what? I, I'm going to I'm going to trust your or I'm going to trust in your law. I'm going to trust in your statutes. My wife and I we say this all the time, and if we could just get the people of God to really embrace it, we know don't nobody want to die and go to hell. We get it. We get it. That's how I got saved. Fire and brimstone. I don't want to go to hell. Um, yes, eternal life. I'm working. But when you get to the point where He's not just your Savior, but He's your Lord and your Savior. When you understand that he is your sovereign, when you understand that God is your king, he's more than just a fire escape. When you understand that now, because he's your Lord, yes, there are requirements that you have to fulfill. There's an expectation of how you're supposed to live. There is, there, there is an ideal and there is a picture. There is a character and a morality. There is a, there is a brand that you are supposed to exude because he is your Lord. But what that also means is now you fall under his protection. Now you fall under his guidance. Guidance. Now you fall in his covering. Now you fall under his provision. Mm. 
when he becomes your Lord, you he is responsible for you. Can't nobody come to the king's country and bring war to the king and the king not send his army to fight for his people? I'm so glad that he fights for me because he is my Lord. She became a willing worshiper. She bowed down to him. She worshiped him as Lord. And that's what helped her to gain access to the seat at the table. She don't have to settle for crumbs anymore. She now has access, watch this, she now has access to the reserves of the kingdom. So first, the woman shows tenacity and persistence. Jesus says, this isn't for you. Then she worships Christ. After she worships him, Jesus tell her, it's not appropriate to give what is intended to God's chosen people to such a dog as she. <sighs> Wait a minute! <laughs> Wait a minute! This right here. <laughs> you can ignore me? I might even let you slide because you want to play favorites because I ain't your people. We ain't grow up together. Mm -hmm. I ain't your ace boot coon. I, you know, you, you, you kind of, you know, you got your little click. Okay. But what you ain't going to do mm -hmm. is you ain't going to call me out my name. Right, right. Come on. Okay, what, what you ain't going to do mm -hmm. I know some of y'all would be like, who you going with? You and I, T.Y. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Listen, some of us will just snap. Yeah. I don't care who you are with your old water making in the wine, walking on rivers, looking head. Right, right. What you ain't going to do is call me no dog. Uh -huh. I don't care. You call me no yup. That would have been. Yeah. We, that would have been. That would be it. Uh -huh. Who are you going <laughs> for real? It was at that moment she could have messed all the way up. She would have messed all the way up. Jesus put it pushed it to the limit. He pushed it to the limit. He got, listen. Listen. I know we talk different. Uh, Y'all know I, I know boundaries though. But ain't no way you gonna call a woman a dog and get away with it. Right. Right. Ain't no way you're going to make a reference that even closely, um, you know, remotely, yeah. you know, looks like you trying to throw shade and slide the dog female statement in there right. and then you go, everybody, eyebrow raised, <laughs> side eye, stink eye, whatever eye you got. <laughs> what did you put that through? <laughs> Nobody be able to talk straight. Jesus says, Jesus. Jesus referenced her people being the equivalent of dogs. So she didn't black out. She didn't snap. She took that. She took that. She says, this is true. She said, but even dogs. Man, listen. She said, even dogs. She says, you Jesus, you the truth, you the light, you say I'm a dog. Watch this. She said, even dogs get the scraps so the crumbs from the table. Yeah, yeah, she said yeah. even dogs mm. get the table scraps. Oh, <laughs> this woman. I got an aunt live down in Trent, my aunt Pokey. Mm -hmm. My aunt Pokey. And um, my aunt Pokey, and they, they love dogs. They, they, they raise dogs, pit bulls, all, all the time. That's why we don't go, <laughs> that's why we never get to visit because you know, they don't do dogs. <laughs> but anyway, but um, so, Whenever we have a family gathering, whether it's, and, and my aunt Pokey don't play. Um, my, my cousin Sonia got married. I did the wedding a couple of years ago, two years ago. And um, she had plates on every table for the scraps, for the bones, for the dogs. She's always done this as long as I've been alive. Barbecue, family reunion, wedding, funeral. Don't talk all them bones out. Them bones just for buckshot, killer, death. Yeah. Uzi. <laughs> Real. 
there's a re there's a reason why I was equipped to teach under the L. Why people to train? Oh, I was. You got got the right one. <laughs> so anyway, but she. There was never any scraps thrown away because those scraps were for the dogs. Now, now watch this. The woman's talking about the scraps on the table. And I'm talking about physical scraps on the table. I want y'all to get this. My Aunt Pokey recognized that what people would just throw away still had value. Y'all yeah. with me so far? Yeah. What people would consider trash still had value for her dogs. Bones, I mean, they're essentially less than leftovers. Leftovers, I can make a plate, right. and I can eat that. I can't do nothing with bones except for give them to a dog, and the bones are sufficient to please dogs. But look at this. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? I know y'all. I, I wasn't ready, so I, I can't be ready for this. This is exactly, oh, help me, Holy Spirit. This is exactly how the Jews have been treating Jesus. They have been throwing Jesus away like he was table scraps. They have been, the Bible says that he was the stone that the builders rejected. They have been teaching Jesus like he was nothing. We don't need your teaching. We don't need your miracle. He was, he was performing miracles. He was teaching. He was, and the Jews, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees was like, we got everything going just fine with our religion. We got a nice thing set up. They were just treating him like poo-poo. Son of David. This is exactly how the, J the Jews have been treating Jesus, the people who he came to deliver. They treat Jesus like table scraps. Now, I'm sure the woman didn't realize it at the time, but she was desperate to have what others saw worthless. She was desperate to have Jesus when the Jews didn't care for him. Y'all getting this? She was desperate to have what the Jews were pushing away from the table. She was worshiping the Jews' table scraps, so to speak. She was screaming out and she was tenacious about those crumbs. She realized that what some saw as crumbs was all she needed. She chose not to be offended. She put her pride aside and she said, the crumbs for your table, that's exactly what I need for my situation. Mm. The woman had humility. The woman showed humility when pride and ego rose to the surface. I might have missed my blessing mm. Mm -hmm. because I know pride and ego yeah. rises to the surface. What humility is, humility is a modest opinion or estimate of one's own importance, rank, status, or ability. This woman knew that compared to Jesus, she was less than a dog. Think about it. If you put yourself up to Jesus, what, what could Jesus call you in comparison to him? That's where the humility piece really comes in. It's not about you. It's not about how you measure up against your fellow man. Mm. It's about how you measure up against God. Mm. That's why all of our righteousness is always filthy rags. That's why no matter how good we are, we still have a long journey ahead of us because we're not competing with one another. Right, right. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but we are striving to be like Christ. So if Christ calls her a dog, then she's like, you Jesus, you the Messiah, so a dog I am. That's tough. Right, right. I, I know, I know, yeah. but you gotta get the you gotta get, get don't yeah. don't get offended by the words. Get understand the principle and in action behind the dialogue. She showed humility. Whatever, listen, 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 listen. If, if, I, I like how, how old church you say, listen, if I gotta be a doorkeeper in the kingdom, that I'm I'm grateful. Listen, if I gotta be the guy sweeping the streets in glory. Yeah. Clean up because I made it in. I don't care. Right, right. Okay, but, but, but you can't get up. Oh, I'm gonna have a mansion. I'm gonna be big balling up in. Mm, I'm just, mm. A modest estimate of one's own rank or status. That's what humility is. When I when I when I look at Christ and I look at myself, I'm trash. Mm -hmm. I'm trash. <laughs> I'm garbage. I'm. I'm, I'm <laughs> I got, I got nothing, God. So whatever, whatever you say, whatever you do, this is, the, and, and this is important because when you have this humility, you don't have to settle crumbs no more. Yeah. 
We don't have to settle for crumbs. So let, so let me get to this. Let me get to this. Because the woman was like, crumbs are, are, are good enough. And I just, I just want to hit you with the like, don't allow your ego or pride cause you to ignore God. Like, or, or, or like, don't, don't allow your ego or your pride to push you, put you in a place that you lose your moral or your character tenacity. Because your ego gets the better of you and then you function in anger. You function in vengeance. You, you, you function in unforgiveness. Now the tenacity that we talked about earlier has been compromised. Y'all with me? Stay humble. Stay humble. Stay humble. Ain't nobody entitled to nothing in the world. We're entitled to things because of Christ and because of his grace and mercy, but you got to stay humble. Don't allow your feelings or intelligence or your belief in your own ability to cause you to respond in a way that con contradicts God's word. we got to stay humble in ourselves and trust God. All right? Because this woman was tenacious and because this woman was a willing worshiper and because this woman put her pride to the side and humbled herself to what God said, not what she felt, she got cuisine instead of crumbs. Mm. The woman said even a dog yeah. could get the crumbs, but she didn't get crumbs because Jesus gave her the same type of blessing that the centurion received. Right. In Matthew 8, 13, it says, and Jesus said to the centurion after, this was a crazy story too. Because the centurion, a centurion is a soldier. He's an officer in the military who has a hundred soldiers under him. So he wasn't a dog. Right. He was a man of stature. He was known in the city as a centurion. He and, and, and he said, Jesus, I have a servant who is sick. And look at Jesus. Jesus dealt with him way different than he dealt with this woman he called the dog. He said, well, let's go to your house. And the centurion was like, nah, nah, you ain't got to go there. I understand authority. He was like, if you just sit, he's like, I send people by my mouth and they come and they go. He was like, all you have to do is say the word. And, I, and he goes, greater faith have I not seen in all of um, Galilee. I believe it was Galilee or Judea. Jesus always talking about he ain't seen something in a certain city. But anyway, Jesus, I study more. Um, but anyway, but, but the point is, he said, your faith is great. Consider it done. The story goes on to say that the servant was healed within the hour. This woman, because of her persistence, her tenacity, her willingness to worship, and her humility, she didn't have to settle for crumbs. She got the centurion blessing. She got the same blessing. Jesus was going to go to the centurion's house, but he was rejecting the woman. But because of her attitude and demeanor, she got that she didn't have to settle for crumbs. She got the type of blessing that was reserved for people of prestige. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You don't have to settle for crumbs when you have the right attitude. Right. The level of what you receive from God is based on how you manage the in-between moments. Don't settle for crumbs. You are worthy. Yeah. You messed up in the past. So what? Yeah. You, was born, you wasn't born into a wealthy family. So what? You, are, are, are you, are you going to be persistent and diligent? Are you willing to wait? Are you willing to fight? Are you willing to maintain your position of faith? Are you willing to maintain your integrity? Are you willing to maintain your hope? Are you really willing to trust in God and his way and his plan? I lived off of crumbs for a long time. I lived off of crumbs for a long time. My mom was blessed, so I was blessed. My church was blessed, so I benefited from them. But it wasn't until I got tired of paycheck to paycheck, tired of not being able to help the people I love, tired of wondering if I was going to make it. And I began to believe that God's word is true, that he's never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging for bread. So then I got out of my own way. I claimed my place at the God's table. I began to be tenacious and relentless. I began to say, you know what, I'm gonna tell you the truth, even if it hurts. Yeah. You might get offended, yeah. you might not like it, but I'm gonna tell you the truth, you need to grow up. Mm -hmm. You're a liar. <laughs> right. mm. No, I don't agree with that, I love you, but I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. Begin to be tenacious in my morality. 
Because understanding that I'm pursuing him every time I say Jesus saves. I'm pursuing him every, I'm say, every time I say, no, homosexuality is a sin. No, I'm, I'm pursuing him every time I, I, I say, no, nah, I told my mom. You can't be telling a white lie. I told my mom this. Yeah. I said, mom, a white lie is a lie. Right. <laughs> Evangelist, do that in there. That's she. That's Christian she. Evangelist. Put a title on Remind him. <laughs> I got, begin to worship willingly. My wife and I, we always say we live a lifestyle of worship. So worship, I know we all get caught up, ah, worship, we're singing a song and we're waving our hands. This is worship. Worship is service. Yeah. Like everything you do for God is worship. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times people see that when, when, you, when, you, when you worship, the real quick and dirty of worship is worship is, it, it invites the kingdom of God. It invites the presence of God into the situations for others to witness. Yeah. For, so when someone sees me forgive someone and treat someone kindly who is very ignorant because I'm serving God, I'm being his vessel at that moment, people will be from the outside and be like, man, I just love how you deal with people. I mean, I, I couldn't have did that. That's worship. Mm -hmm. Because I, they're not see, they, they think they're seeing a person, but what they're seeing is the God in me, yeah. in action. Yeah. You have to be willing to make those sacrifices. Worship is, uh, are, uh, it, it, a part of worship is sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Offering ourselves, presenting ourselves as living sacrifices, um, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. You have to be willing to worship God. Don't be motivated and inspired by others. Be motivated and inspired by God. And stay Amen. humble. Amen. You don't want no more crumbs? Recognize that the blood of Christ alone that grants us access to his storehouse. The plenty, therefore, we must have access to. The plenty that we must have access to it, he tells us how to access it, not how we want to access it. You can't access his storehouse the way you want to. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. No man gets to the Father except through him. you got to go his way. You may be able to sing like an angel, but if you're in the flesh, Beyonce, you're not getting there. I didn't, I didn't see it. <laughs> Women love Beyonce. I always, I, I, I always, I throw bad shade on you. You could be like, like the girl can sing, but if she ain't singing what God says, no access. Yeah. Access denied. Access denied. You may have some people who can talk real good, but if they don't have the heart of God and they're manipulating words right. to get people to do what they want to do, they really don't have no access. Don't you be fooled in the moment. Amen. Stay humble. Access it. Humble means we put aside us and we trust God's process. No more crumbs for me. No more crumbs for you. Be tenacious. Worship willingly, even when you don't feel like it. Worship is tough. A lot of times church is the funniest example. I don't feel like singing. It's dry in here. Worship anyway. Mm -hmm. Worship willingly. Break through. If you can't, if you can't worship willingly in church, you're gonna have a hard time serving yeah. like a Christian in the world. And I say it again. Serving like a Christian in the world, because I know Linda probably didn't hear me. That was for effect. But um, y'all blessed. No more crumbs. Yes. This, I know it's kind of heavy. It was, it was heavy when I was teaching it, but no, no more crumbs. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to dine fine yes. with the king. I, I don't, I don't want to settle. I don't want to settle for. I don't, I don't, I don't want to settle for table scraps, y'all. And I don't want you settling for table scraps either. My wife, you know, she um, she works with a friend of our family's um, and, and they do weddings. She's a wedding planner, so they go and um. The rule is whenever she comes home, she has to bring me a piece of cake, a piece of wedding cake, whatever. So I can't get a six pack. So as well, I got like six pieces of wedding cake a year. But, um, but, 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 and, and, and I enjoy, like, like, I enjoy that, you know, but the wedding cake is only for guests to the wedding. So in a way, you know, I'm at the king's table, even though I'm not there, even though I'm not there, but you don't have to settle like that. You can sit up at the table, Whenever you want, you don't have to hope someone. But a couple of times they ran out of cake, or the cake wasn't right, or they took too long, and I didn't get my cake. Yeah. You don't got to worry about that. You don't have you don't have to worry about hoping you get some crumbs, hoping you get some leftovers, hoping somebody. You got a right. You have an invitation yeah. to the table. Amen. Amen. Amen.